Hello everyone and welcome to another Foul Original. The WWE has licensed out its name to many products over the years. Calendars, t-shirts, mugs, and of course, inevitably, video games. With over 40 years of video games, I thought it could be interesting to go back through these games from the late 1980s, all the way through to the current WWE 2K series right now. If you want to see more of this series, then make sure you throw a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe and hit the bell for more upcoming episodes too. Today, let's look at Micro League Wrestling, the first WWE licensed video game. Ask most people what the first WWF video game was, and they will probably tell you WWF WrestleMania on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1989. That was the second. There was another. The first licensed video game by the then WWF, now WWE, was actually called Micro League Wrestling. The game was released to microcomputers, the Commodore 64 and Atari ST in 1987. An Amiga and a DOS version for PCs would follow in 1989. The game was developed by Micro League and published as part of their Micro League Sports series alongside titles such as Micro League Baseball. The first game released on cassette tape lets you pick from two matches, either Hulk Hogan vs Macho Man Randy Savage on side one, or Hulk Hogan vs Mr Wonderful Paul Orndorff on the other. Further expansion packs, called WWF Superstar Series, were released in 1987. These would feature WWF superstars such as Jake the Snake Roberts and the Honky Tonk Man. Pick either the match on the disc or load one of the expansion discs. You can play with either mouse, keyboard, joystick or any combination of the two. There's of course an option for either one or two players. Then you get to pick from either a 10 or 20 minute time limit with a special 60 minute grudge match option too. But that's not all, you can also pick a custom name from the arena that you'll be wrestling in, which is a nice touch. Each of the matches start with Mean Gene Oakland interviewing each of the participants with full text promos to help hype up the upcoming match. We then get the introductions from Howard Finkel before taking it to the ring. For fans of current wrestling games, Control Scheme is a million miles away from what we are used to. The game is close to a turn-based RPG or role-playing game like Final Fantasy. You pick a move from a selection in an on-screen list and your opponent gets to pick theirs. Based on the timing and in-game engine, you will either take or cause damage. Each of the wrestlers on the in-game roster have five basic moves, like a wrist lock, a stomp or a punch four major moves, like a suplex or atomic bomb, and one super move, like the leg drop. The basic moves cause two damage points, the major moves cause four damage points, the super moves cause six damage points, and are the only way to pin your opponent. In addition to this, if you're a good guy or face wrestler, you can attempt a special move to try and pump up the crowd for some momentum and to recover some damage. If you're a bad guy or heel wrestler, you can try to cheat with special tactics, but there is a chance you could be disqualified if caught. The matches contain text commentary beneath the match by Vince McMahon with either Jesse the Body Ventura or Bruno Sammartino. In the later expansions, this would also include Bobby the Brain Heenan and Lord Alfred Hayes. The look of the game is quite impressive for something that hit the market back in 1987. The game has digitised graphics which make up the matches, moves and promo packages before matches. The animations for the suplex, for example, look great. The images seem to have been digitised from actual in-ring footage from the WWE tape library and really shine here. Green is something you will see in a lot of games from that era and I'm sure it gives us a lot of healthy nostalgia right now. The damage bar between the wrestler, the on-screen clock and of course the list of moves. Owning a microcomputer myself here in the UK in the 1990s, I can tell you that this would have taken pride of place in my Commodore 64 collection. 
Of course, the limitations of a microcomputer are on show here, and the slideshow style gameplay does work for this game, but it does really limit the replayability factor. Like most games on microcomputers at the time, we have a very limited soundtrack, and in this case, it's a MIDI version of the WWF Superstars theme from the 1980s. Not too bad, and with such a short game, it doesn't get too annoying too fast. Here's a short taste. Two expansion discs were released for the Commodore 64 and Atari ST in 1988 called the WWF Superstar Series. The first would have Randy Savage vs Honky Tonk Man on side 1 and Hacksaw Jim Duggan vs King Harley Race on side 2. The second disc featured Hulk Hogan vs The Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase on side 1 and Jake the Snake Roberts vs Ravishing Rick Rude on side 2. This first game would be a great way to kick off the video game and wrestling connection during the height of Hulkamania. The game is quite short, with a full play session of any of the sides lasting up to the maximum of 60 minutes. After the 1989 Amiga and DOS releases, the WWE would shift its attention away from computers and towards consoles like the Nintendo Entertainment System. More about that next time when we look at the first WWE console game 1989's WWF Wrestlemania on the NES. Quick question, did you play the Micro League wrestling game? Do you think a turn-based wrestling game could work today? Sound off in the comments. Like the video if you did, subscribe and hit the bell if you would, share if you can. This has been a Foul Original, thanks for watching, see you next time.